I just always think about the situation and how it happened and be like, what's the lesson I can get from this? And be like, how could I never get in this situation again? What up, what up, what up? Fatim got the juice, you officially plugged in. We kicking it with the realest, richest youngin', man. Baltimore zone, Def Jam zone. Roddy Rex, what's up? What's up, how you feeling? Man, congratulations, baby. Hey, listen, man. One thing we gonna do today, man, we gonna dive into who Roddy Rex is, where Roddy Rex come from, what Roddy Rex is about, man. We gonna tell the whole story from beginning to where we at now, man. That's cool with you? Yeah, for sure. You ain't never seen no young niggas lit like this. Whole life for his looking like a brick like this. Like I love this. it when I pop my shit like this. Should like I buy this. a new chain? Should I buy a new whip? Should I buy a new fit? Or just get some niggas hit? I ain't tripping on no money. I just made a quick flip. Got a whole lot of swag. Got a whole lot of racks in the bag. I can't wear it like white boy Chris. Like you ain't never seen no young niggas lit like this. Congratulations again, man. How's it feel, man? How you feeling, man? Feel good. You're a couple days in now. You in now. Yeah. Man, I'm proud of you, man. I know we talk almost every day now, man. And just seeing you move, man, and, and seeing the response has been overwhelming for me because so many times you always hear people say, like, the cliche, you know, Baltimore don't support, and I'm like, yeah. that's bull. Like, yeah. Baltimore behind Rowdy. D.C. behind Rowdy. Like, yeah. like the, the, the region behind you, man. So I, I'm, I'm glad to see the direction we're going in, and I can't wait for the rest of the world to see what we already know. You yeah. know what I mean? This is a different situation. Like th this is this is Def Jam. This is this is like going to the league and you started the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, like, this, like it's, this is a different breed. Yeah, you know I mean, like, like man, like damn. Like first, <laughs> first round draft pick. First round draft pick. Fresh out of college, going to the Lakers and you starting. Like that, that yeah. that's the equivalent to what Rowdy Rex is doing uh, with Def Jam. So I, I just wanted to pop in, man, on behalf of myself, DTLR, DTLR Radio. And, like, man, congrats, man. Now, West Baltimore, man, is, is, is no stranger to probably one of the worst neighborhoods, man. Tell us about growing up in West Baltimore. Where you from? Mm, growing up, West Baltimore, Longwood. That's biggest part of me for real like the way I spent my last couple summers at the famous yellow store right there on Westwood what block what, what actually what, what actually block did you grow up in 3000 Westwood Avenue 3000 Westwood Avenue yeah. so you gotta pull up over here today man and check the temperature man uh, yes. love right there a lot, lot of love. I feel like, feel like home. That's, when I go back to my block, that's when I really feel like me again. Like I feel like me. See, I get them racks, I get more and more. It's never enough. Want me to smash, I hit them in the back, I fall from the front. Yeah. I still get them racks, I'm off of the trap, it's never enough. Got down, feel good to walk in the mall and get what you want. Yeah. We on a sack speed, if we shot around, relaxing. Really be trafficking, make more than you get for a back end. Yeah. I get them back. I got it all up a trap in. Counting my blessings, turned out my loss to the last end. Yeah. I get a pound of Riley Racks growing up in West Baltimore, man. How many do you, you had any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got seven brothers, two sisters. Ooh. Big family. Man, ten of y'all. Yeah. Roddy Rex is one of ten. Ten. Damn. And I thought of the first day I ever seen him record a song. So it made it feel like he really came a long way. Like yeah. it just made it feel like everything paid off. Cause I remember we had long nights. In the closet studio, I'm talking about something down my uncle house in the closet. We up all night, like everything we ever went through, like it just felt like it paid off. And I know we still got a long way to go, so I mean, it just felt like it's just one step closer. Yeah, one step closer. That's all, man. I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. It's still like it's so brand new, it's so fresh. It's not like it's not like it's like like a year going on the process. It's just yeah. like yesterday. It's just still like a dream. Yeah, real talk. I, I like this music myself. I knew everybody else was gonna like it. Yeah, at first, like him out of all my brothers, he only listen to certain type of music. So once I knew that he started liking my music, now I'm like, yeah, it's up. It's scary, but it's exciting. Just to know that he in town and everybody know, you know. And I just pray that you had much success, you know, and that you go a long way in your journey. You know, your dreams family came true, and I'm so proud of you. You know, I just can't believe that, you know, my son, you know, is where he want to be. His dreams really came true. Yeah. 
It feel good knowing I'm the one that's gonna make everybody happy. That's why I just try to make sure everybody happy every day, like do whatever I can to make sure nobody, because I know what everybody going through. Busy. I know everybody pain, so yeah. I like to brighten up everybody. Day. Now, with them streets, um, sure comes a lot of losses. Like, are, are you used to the losses? Are you numb to them? Or are you? I probably lost like ten homeboys, but like. 10 people I was close to died, but like 10 people I was cool with went to jail. Like people got real time, stuff like that. What's the closest loss that you suffered throughout your, throughout the years? My man did, like, that was the biggest loss I ever took because I was right there when he died for real. So it was like, it felt like the world ended for real. So we on our way to the cemetery to go see Dave. Dave is your best friend? Yeah, big how old, brother. How old was he when he got killed? He was 24, I was like 19, I think. Cause Dave, he was in college for real. He was playing basketball for real. So I just know like, I just always think about his story. Like he was in the streets, but he was still going to college for real. And no, I'm not, I'm not. He, was, he was a star, but it just the streets. To you out of everything you got going on, like he was the older, he was the older one in the hood that everybody looked up to because he was doing the right stuff. He was never the one in the hood that would push you to do the wrong stuff. Like he, he just I hang around him every day. I always ride with him, like ride around with him every day, all day. Just ride around with him, we talk for real. So. He saw that I really wanted some money for real, so he just kept me around for real. He saw that I was saving my money. He just made sure I was good, like a real big brother. Like, it wasn't even, what I really loved about him, it wasn't nothing that was benefiting him from me doing good. He was just doing that for me, you feel me? Mm. He was saving your money, is that what his name Riley Ranks came from? Yeah, that's, yeah, he didn't want to name me for real. I was, cause he was like, he noticed that I came outside. But I used to save my money, and I used to bring my money outside every day, but I still had more money I was making. Keep on saving my money every day. And I just like, I was like 14. I bought all the new Jordans, buy everything I wanted for it. That's all that I really want some money. Once he started, I was really saving my money. Just like, man, I know what I'm gonna call you. Rex, Roddy Rex. You always got the Rex on you. Like, you always, I always had the money on like. Even when I was young, I always knew I wanted to save some money. I knew I wanted to earn some money. So he was like, he saw that in me. Then he just, like, he saw that I was different for real. How do you persevere and get through those tough times, you know, and the losses? I just look at everything happening for a reason. Everything, like, I just always think about the situation and how it happened and be like, what's the lesson I can get from this? And like, how could I never get in this situation again? That's it. Stuff will play through my mind. Like, I see a situation happening and I'll be like, nah, I can't do this that way because I already know how that can happen. You feel me? I already know how that's going to end up.
folks who don't know, DTLR and DTLR Radio are big um, when it comes to the culture, as Scott was saying, and especially with the music industry. But, you know, when you get opportunities like this, and we did this on purpose, and this is pur purposefully done, to get that celebration, and when you get a win coming from where we come from, it's important that we celebrate it as a culture. Where Roddy's coming from, it definitely doesn't happen that much. So we're here um, to celebrate the victory, the win, and to let you know that we're here for your entire career. We're a partner for life, and we want to see you see it through ourselves, and we know you the one with it, all right? Yeah, sure. So, real quick, I know everybody don't got a drink, but we're going to do Cheers. something. Cheers. 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 Roddy Racks and Def Jam, and yes. you already know. Cheers. 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 Us being proud of you is an understatement, and I think for me it's personal, um, and, and because this is a full circle, circle moment for me. Um, so if anybody knows about my career, I started at the age of 14 at a club called Club Indigo, where his uncle was the guy who actually put me on. This was the guy who gave my first real residency. And he wasn't paying me no money back then, so we're gonna talk about that later. But, uh. but, 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 but seriously, I, I, was, I was a kid, I was 14 years old. And I was just hungry, starving, trying to get my name out there. He gave me my first shot. Um, so if it was not for your uncle giving my first shot, I probably never would have met my man, who's Sean Caesar. Um, so when, when, when I first talked to Lil E, and he was telling me, yo, that's my nephew, I said, that's so crazy, because I said, I really want to get behind Shorty. But it now means more, because I can be like, you know what, what you did for me, I'm going to try my best to do for him really right. get behind him so I, I'm glad that this moment is happening and always everything happens how it's supposed to happen like I had no idea that 25 years ago I would meet Lil E and then 25 years later I can be really fully trying my best to market and push the living crap out of this nephew so you got 110 percent of my support it's not gonna stop um, this is this is bigger than rap this is this is personal for me so so look, we want to talk real quick on what 295 Entertainment is and what it means to the area, mm -hmm. to Baltimore, to Washington <coughs> specifically, and um, what we're doing to try and boost those artists and artistry up. What 295 will be and what it is, is actually the gateway to getting artists from our area to those major labels that haven't had that outlet, who haven't had that direct access, who don't talk the language that the labels speak, or just don't have the relationships. Myself, Sean Caesar, Quicksilver, and Gianne, who's not here, so shout out to her. Absolutely. We all have those relationships and we cultivate them every day. And we just wanna make sure the right artists are getting the right exposure, which is giving the right representation of Baltimore and the DMV. And Roddy Rex is the epitome of what Baltimore looks like, is, and will be in the future to come.